Hey guys, today we're going to talk about getting out the cello and the bass and make sure we get everything set up securely and safely and putting everything back again. So all of my students that rent an instrument, they always come with the instrument inside the case with a few things in there I'll show you in a second and also a stand that's in a little bag. And we're going to start with the stand because that's the first thing kids will get out whenever they get in class. First step when you're getting the stand out of the bag is to open the zipper. And if you have one of these stands in the classroom, that's fine. If you have a different kind of stand in the class, that's fine. Um, my students always have these at home, and sometimes they bring them back and forth. Sometimes they use other stands in the classroom. That's perfectly okay. There are a bunch of knobs on the back of here, so make sure that if you um, if you need to move anything, you always loosen the knob first. Don't ever try to move things with the knob tight, or else it will strip the screw out and really tear up the stand. So I always start with the bottom, loosen that up. Pull on two sides slowly, don't want to pull too hard. Pull it down a little bit until about like that. You want it to be pretty wide and then tighten it back. It doesn't have to be super tight, just tight enough to hold it. Move up to the second screw. Now this is going to be different for, for everybody's height. So if they're a little bit taller, they may need to raise this a little more. I usually advise them to start a little bit on the high side so they can bring it down lower if they need to because that gets everybody's instruments up. So they have the middle one. They have this another screw right here if they need to raise it even more. They can loosen that and raise it up a little more. The last screw is this big one on top. Same thing, loosen this and flip this part up. You want it to be a little bit tilted backwards like this because if it's too far straight, the book or the music will fall off. So make sure it's tilted back a little bit. Tighten it back down to the right. And all these uh, get tighter as you go to the right or clockwise. They get looser as you go counterclockwise to the left. Tighten it down a little bit. This is the fun part. You get to spread it open like a bird spreading its wings. Then you have one minute stand ready to go. If your stand comes with these little arms on the front, that's just to hold the music on your stand or the book open on your stand so it doesn't fall out or fall off the stand. So if it doesn't have that, it's not a big deal, but those are kind of helpful sometimes uh, unless you have a page turn. So that's the music stand. That's your first step. This is a bass, it's actually a quarter size bass, so it's pretty small, but it's the size that most beginner students would be playing. Um, and it, the process is the same for bass and cello, basically. So you have a bow pocket right here that your bow is going to sit in, so always be careful with that. Don't let it break the bow if you're trying to move things around too much. You also have uh, some other pockets, sometimes it's pretty small, this one's pretty big. So we're going to open this up, and in this pocket should be a couple different things. You should have some kind of cleaning rag, like this, you set it off to the side. And you should have some kind of rock stop. It may look like this or may look like that. And this is to help the instrument from sliding around. And you should probably be able to see down here on the end. There's actually a rubber, a rubber um, piece down here on the end to keep it from sliding around too. So if you have one of these, you may not need a rock stop right away. But if you don't have it, it's just a point down there. You will need a rock stop or else it'll tear the floor up and slide all over the place. So you have those. You also have, I've already taken it out, some kind of rosin. Now this is rosin that would be okay for cello. There's a different kind of rosin for bass. Um, but it does essentially the same thing. So I'm going to take this and set this off to the side for right now. Now there are two different ways I tell my students they can open these up. I only give them one option at the beginning. So at the beginning, um, there are zippers here at the bottom. I'm going to unzip both of these. And I should mention, this is always on the floor. I have it on the table now. I always have them open instruments on the floor, no matter what instrument it is, so that it doesn't fall from any height. So we're going to open this up, we're going to unzip this, it only goes that far on that side, and unzip this all the way to the top as far as it'll go. Some zippers on base and cello cases will go all the way around the top to the back side, some only go up this high, and this is like three quarters of the way up the neck, when either way is fine. Now again, this is usually sitting on the floor, always sitting on the floor for students. So I have to open this up like this, you see the base, open it up so that the front is laying on the, on the floor, it's all nice and open, you can see everything. And then they will pick it up with both hands. Never pick it up under here, because that will break things and pull the bridge off. Pick it up um, one side under the bottom here, and one side under where the neck is, and they'll pull it out. And I'm going to do this a little bit. Pull it out away on the floor. Slide it on the floor. All right, so we've got the base out of the case now. So the next thing to do, and the same for cellos, loosen this screw up right here, and they have an end pin that pulls out. It can actually extend. So I'll slide this down. And again, this is all done on the floor, on top of the case, so the back of the instrument doesn't get scraped up on the hard floor, because we all have tile floors in schools. So we're going to slide this out to whatever height the student needs it to. And after a day or two, they should know about how many notches they need to go. They should be able to judge about how far. 
and then we're going to tighten it back down. We're going to get our rock stop. We'll pretend like we don't have one of these little rubber stoppers on the end. We get our rock stop. We're going to sit it on the floor. I'm going to do this up here so it's easy to see. Once you get the rock stop on the floor, the player will set this in the rock stop just like that, and that'll keep it from moving around. If you have a rubber tip like this, you can set this directly on the floor and it's not going to move. It won't go anywhere. The next thing after all that, I have students go ahead and get the bow out. Now I use the bow, I have them get the bow out last because I don't want them to have the bow in their hand and try to be messing with this at the same time. So they leave the bow in their case until the end. And to tighten the bow up, you just turn the screw to the right. This one's pretty loose, which is okay. And I always tell them you want it tight enough for bass and cello bows where the hair is not going to uh, flop around on its own. It's not going to move on its own. You also want it tight enough so where if you push on the strings, it doesn't hit the stick. So if I wanted to touch the stick with the, with the bow hair, I'd have to actually push really hard, which I'm not going to do. Um, you always want to make sure that whatever instrument you're using, this is the same for all four, that the bow has a little bit of curve left in it. If the bow is too straight, if it's perfectly straight on the stick, that means it's too tight and you can snap the tip off or snap the hair out or break this little piece in here. So you want to make sure you have a little bit of a curve left to it. You don't want it to be too tight. Now like I mentioned earlier, this is rosin that would be good for a violin, viol, or cello, not necessarily a bass. But since I have a bass out and this is what you're likely to see in most programs, most schools that have orchestras, I'm going to show you with this. So the process for this is the same as if it's a violin or viola or cello. Um, you just hold it in your left hand, and this is a brand new rosin, so it's really slick and really smooth. It might take a little bit longer to get it broken in. Um, if you have a rosin that's already kind of worn and uh, rubbed off a little bit, that actually might work a little bit better, a little bit faster. So we're going to take this new rosin, we're going to put the strings right in the middle of it, and we're just going to run back and forth. On an older rosin, this won't take very long, maybe three or four runs back and forth. On a newer rosin like this, you can see it's starting to scuff up a little bit. That's normal, that's what it's supposed to do. So we're going to run back and forth, three or four times, all the way across the entire length of the bow, because we're going to use the whole bow. I always make sure my kids use the entire bow. And once you're satisfied with that, you'll put, the box, put this back in the box. And save it off to the side or put it back in your case. So now we've got the base out, we've got the end pin pulled out where we need it to go, we've got the, the bow rosin and tightened up, we're ready to play. put everything back where it came from. So the first step I always have everybody do is loosen the bows back up. So we're going to turn this through to the left. And it doesn't have to be super loose. It doesn't have to be so loose that the screw comes out like that where it has a gap. It can be all the way touching the wood of the stick. Uh, it should be loose enough where the hair can move a little bit. Or if you were going to touch the strings, it can touch the stick with the hair without having to push really hard. So just loose enough to take the tension off. You want to make sure there's not extra tension on here. And go ahead and immediately put that back in the case. Again, for cellos and basses, there's a bow, a bow pocket that goes right here. So you just slide that down in there. And you can close this up. Next step for cellos and basses is to push the end pin in. You want to always make sure you loosen this up. Cellos and basses, especially cellos, may not always have these little notches. It might be a smooth um, end pin. If that's the case, kids can take and shove them down in there. But that can actually shove this through the wood of the instrument and damage the instrument. It can't be repaired necessarily. So you always want to make sure you loosen this first. Push that in, and then tighten it back down so it doesn't fall out accidentally. And now your instrument's ready to be put back in the case. Again, I always have these on the floor whenever we're putting them back in the case. It's just like when we get them out. So uh, there are a couple different ways you can put them back in, just like when you get them out. The exact same thing we did earlier, except backwards. So I'm going to show you both ways real quick. This way, if I have the instrument sitting on the floor, I always try to tell the kids to put the case under the instrument, and we're going to lay this on its side. And then we're going to fold up the instrument around it so that we can zip it on the edge. And I'll show you what that is. So I have the case here, and again, this will be laying on the floor. I'll open it up. And this particular case, as I mentioned earlier, does not zip all the way to the front. So you want to set the instrument on its back, kind of off to the end a little bit. And then they'll grab it here. Again, you don't want to grab it under the strings or on the bridge. It looks like a handle, but it's not. It'll break it. You want to push it here a little bit. Make sure you lift this so you can get the end scroll into the instrument in and make sure everything is being held securely. And then pull this end around, just like this. 
while it's sitting a little bit in the case, but not all the way zipped up, I always like to have everybody clean the strings off, just like I did with the violins and violas. So just take your cleaning rag. Yours may be different. It might be blue or a different color. It doesn't matter. Take the cleaning rag, run all the way down the strings to the bridge. You don't have to get this side because you don't really use this side. All the way down, get all the rosin off if there's any rosin from the bow. All the way down here to the other side where you get your fingers, where you put your fingers to play. You should get all the oils off and make your strings last a lot longer. Pull the top over. Make sure you get it past the bow pocket. Sometimes the bow pocket will catch on the string on the inside. And then we can zip it up. Zipper again is from this side. And then we go all the way to the end. And zip it all the way down. After that, we can put the rock stop back in. In our pocket here. We can put the cleaning cloth back in. And we can put our rosin back in. Close it all up. And we are ready to go on with our day. show them the other way to take it out of the case. Sometimes it's a little bit easier because of how big everything is. So they'll have their instrument laying on the floor first while they go to get their case and bring it back to the chair. They'll pick up their instrument, set it upright on the ground. They will grab their case, especially the kind that don't zip all the way to the top like this one. It only zips about three quarters of the way up the neck. Set the top just like that. And automatically, in most cases, sitting up, they can keep hold of the handle if they want to. They can zip it from this side, stay hold of the handle so it doesn't tip over. And they can zip it from this side. This is sometimes easier for, for smaller kids if they can hold it up or have somebody else hold it up for them while they drape the case over it instead of trying to lay this flat and then scoot everything around and try, and try to zip it up while it's flat on the ground. So that's how to open up and to close down a cello or a bass. Hopefully that helped a little bit. If you have any questions, just send me a comment and let me know. I'll be glad to help. I'll see you later.